Hello, all. So I'm back with Lucetti Sandwell. And you remember last year when we spoke about her film Penelope stories? It's about a Christian based story on how a young girl is sex trafficked and then ended up having to uh, come to faith and to restore and mentally heal from all that trauma. She's done a lot of progress on the film. It's almost released. It's uh, I think it's been fully shot. And she's looking for funding in her um, campaign um, to be able to finish it up, master it, and release it out in the distribution. But uh, the important topic, uh, why the story was being uh, filmed in the first place, it's about sex trafficking. And uh, Lucetti is going to be talking about that, uh, especially how it impacts in her local area and why she got started in that um, topic to be able to film it. Hi, Lucetti. Hi, Sima. How are you today? Yeah, it's good to see you again. Um, so tell me about the progress for your film. Yeah, so uh, thank God we were able to shoot the entire film. And uh, we did have a few hiccups along the way where we had to do some massive reshoots for very important scenes that I couldn't just cut. Um, and then I remember having budget already specified for post-production, but we have to use that budget to do the reshoots. Uh -huh. because uh, we realized we had to do transportation again. We had to shoot at a different location in Montreal, which is about uh, three hours away from where we originally shot it because that uh, the main actress could not come. Uh, so the time constraints were like we had to go to her, shoot there, uh, and then our budget was depleted again just by maybe two scenes that we had to reshoot because we had to... Uh, recruit it again right and then book the entire equipment again so at this point i was like okay you know what let's just go with what we have and when we get to post-production we'll see how we are managed to actually get the funds so that is the reason why we're doing the crowdfunding campaign for that last push to do the final edit of the film so, uh, wow. so i know the filming is very expensive um i'm going to share the link of what the trailer looks like now and then your uh, campaign, which I'm going to have to post a link and I tried to do a search uh, just on Penelope story. For some yes. reason, that site is not user friendly. So I'm going to post a whole link where you guys can find um, her uh, campaign. It's on Seed and Spark. So this is the Penelope story. And I guess um, if they follow it, they're able to fund it right through this portal that right? Is right yes it's now live so they okay. could actually click on make a pledge or uh, one of the awesome incentives that we already have set up there uh, if you can see that on the tab it says wish list that's the distribution of how the funds are going to be so we will need color correction sound right. thing, and um uh music Right. And, then, and then the last one will be the film distribution, like to film festivals to cover the cost of those. So when they donate or make a pledge, it's on any one of these specific. They could do that. Yes. Yes. They could do that directly. So or that is there another yeah. tab somewhere that they can just. Yes, where it says, yes. The story. And then uh, you go all the way down and you will see the incentives. Those are the characters, and how do we spread the word? So yeah, so those are the the uh, yeah, the incentives. Where anyone, on that tab. <laughs> yes, where anyone can click on, and and they can go ahead and fund it. So I want to make sure that the audience knows where to go because I was having a little bit of issues. So I don't see a pledge button on the main story. Yeah, uh, you're right. Um, so I think they can only go to the wish list tab um unless yeah we have to probably just change the um so what i would do i don't know if you have any um way I to just, edit the page yourself but yeah. i would put the pledge button at the very top yes yes you're right and so then let me otherwise see. they can go directly into any one of these tabs yes and make a pledge right Yes, that is correct. So I, I will do that and send you the new link. Would that be okay? 
Yeah, that'd be perfect. So I'll post it, uh, that instead of, um, because it's a new site. I know you had the original campaign at Kickstarter and now it's at Seed and Spark. So you will have to join um, Seed and Spark and then follow uh, the link that I'm going to be posting. And from that link, you can go ahead and make a pledge to help out to finish this film. So I'm going to also share the trailer that you did. it's in its raw form where you're going to be needing indoor lighting and color correction and all that so I definitely see but it's a beautiful film and it's a beautiful story so let's talk about uh, why you thought to uh, do this topic of sex trafficking that, that that's a great question um at the beginning of the uh, when I was writing the script it was not going to be about sex trafficking but on summer of 2020, I went to Manitouli Island in Northern Ontario, Canada, and we were just as a family trip. And uh, as I was driving along, I saw uh, Indigenous reserves and big signs, like big billboards stating buying sex is a crime. I saw that and I, I you know, I, I just like caught me off guard because I'd never saw, seen anything like that in Canada, especially. And so we continue going on the highway and I kept seeing signs like that along the way. And there's a bunch of farms there. There's not that many houses. And so it it got me interested to dig in a little bit more. And so when I did research with several organizations that help victims uh, to recover from sex trafficking, um, I find out that five four out of five of these girls that are being trafficked are indigenous and also they're they go as young as 12 years old wow. so yes it's, it's just heartbreaking uh, because i'm a mom too my husband is indigenous and therefore my daughter so now i took it personal right. because i i was i was i've been living here in canada for 15 years i never heard anything like this if this is not being brought up in, in, in the social media or, or TV or news, so I have to find out on my own by actually digging in and doing the research and uh, contacting these organizations. My whole thought was to um, get interviews with the victims, and um, and that was tough. And I, I understand why, because they don't want to be reliving the same uh, yeah. story in their minds. So I... I prayed to God about it, and then I know that the Holy Spirit just told me, you know what, the film is not going to be about uh, sex trafficking, because I was heartbroken, because I wanted to show a little bit more about what's going on, mm-hmm. but I didn't know much about it, right, and and, and I was getting uh, a lot of anxiety, and so God gave me peace and said, it's not about that, I want you to write the film about the journey someone takes from being a victim to becoming the hero of your own life, to actually break free. And you do that through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so that gave me such much peace because I said, I know how to write that because I could relate to my journey. And that my journey, and I did mention that to you before, Seema, where I was able to overcome mental abuse. Oh, yeah. And that was the only way I could do it was to uh, forgive my oppressor at the time and finally let go 
Right. And, and then that's one of the things that uh, I noticed by doing the research is that most of these women go back to their abusive cycle. And I asked them why, if you guys give them everything, they're being given psychiatrists, they're being given uh, clothing, uh, housing, everything, right? Financial, uh, they're being taken care of. But they said it's mainly because uh, the way they have been conditioned for yeah. so many years. Because if they start as young as 12, imagine like when they're like in their 30s, it's right. hard for them. Now they have, they have been given an identity that was created for them that yeah. they cannot survive without their oppressor. They're and like emotionally linked to them so no matter what you do that's heartbreaking though and you know like the fact that you're a christian filmmaker and a believer and i mean your stories and what's inside of you is going to be reflected in your films you know i'm, I'm glad that god has chosen you to be a filmmaker especially now that you know i, I i've been one as you know i've been wanting to make my own films and stuff too and i, I know the process is very hard I'm only still at the script stage. So, yeah. you know, I can't even imagine having to try to fund it and try to coordinate and all that stuff that you've already been able to do. So that's, you know, really good uh, work on your part. You mentioned that the girls, uh, you know, the story is not really about sex trafficking, but that they it's coming through hope through Jesus Christ. So that's part of your message in your film, right? That is correct, yes. Yes, and then that, and then I knew how to tell that so well because that happened to me. Uh, I was not so much physically abused, but I was like mentally abused to a degree where I was uh, wondering my own worth, like worth as a woman, as a, as a human being. I had no identity. I was always someone else's person. Like when I came to Canada, I was the immigrant. Uh, I was the international student. I was the the wife of so and so i didn't have an identity no one knew me by who i was but then when jesus found me i was like you are my child i'm a child of god and that just break through everything because at that point i was able to be so confident in who i was uh, my new identity now yeah. that, that i was able to actually forgive and let go for real because i was like how can i forgive someone who has hurting me so much for so many years right. and, and also impressionate my mind into something and someone that I was not. And I actually believed it. Right. Because I couldn't trust anyone. I couldn't go to any other relationship. I thought everybody was bad. <laughs> I couldn't trust uh, anyone. I can totally understand that because once you've been abused uh, physically or mentally, it's it alters your brain chemistry, I think, forever. And how yeah. you view other people. And I totally understand, you know, where you're coming from. And it looks like, you know, this story is really part of you. And I can yes. see it, you know, in your in everything about you. So tell me more about the sex trafficking in Canada itself. I did look up some statistics. I, I have to admit, I didn't know much about this until <laughs> recently. And I'm surprised that there's millions to, you know, almost billion of kids are being trafficked or human trafficked and sex trafficked globally, which astounds me a lot that yeah. this much evil is going on. Yes, and, and it's just, uh, it's, it's heartbreaking, um, not only because I'm a woman, but also because I'm a, I'm a mother. Yeah. So it, it's just felt like God chose me because every time I hear a story about a kid being trafficked in any way or abused in any way, it just breaks my heart to a point where I go into my knees and I just start crying like if it's my child. Yeah. And I start praying to God like, this cannot happen. And, and I go like intercession mode where I, I start, um, you know, just talking to the Holy Spirit that this should end and then that God will rise his warriors to also help out to, to save all the kids of the world because it's our responsibility. They're the new generation. And yeah. if each, each parent, just each parent did their own duty by taking care of their own kid, right? That, that nobody, it wouldn't exist sex trafficking wouldn't exist because every parent will just take care of their own kid 
Yeah, I mean, your prayers are, you know, God said he catches all your prayers. So I'm sure that the fact that this has touched your life and you personally, that Holy Spirit is speaking to you and to be able to put the story out there. But the sad part is, and even God, you know, God said that anyone who touches uh, the little ones, they Mm -hmm. better to have a millstone around their neck. God is going to be judging all of those. But the reality is the world is sort of wicked and even the parents are wicked, you know, and the very poor countries or other countries and even wealthy countries like United States, a lot of them are are taking that initiative to sell their children for money and whatever they want. That's the sad truth. And, you know, like you said, if they all took care of their children, this wouldn't even exist. So Mm -hmm. you're right. It is, it starts with the parents, but then if the parents aren't godly, if they're not, you know, if they're living in their wicked state, then sin is just going to abound like crazy like it has so i'm going to share some statistics uh 13 sex trafficking statistics um globally and it talked about especially overseas they really just do it a lot for money so there's four million victims of sex trafficking globally and 99 percent are women and girls which is astounding to me but i do know that another statistic it's the boys you know that they're that's even rising so it's not just girls um, mm-hmm. But it's equal. And this is that there's no official estimate of sex tra- trafficking in the U.S. I don't think the United States or Canada has really focused on this issue too much. And that's probably why there aren't any real uh, estimates. But I do know it's probably still in the millions what's going on, uh, even in the United States. It says that seven in 10 victims are exploited in Asia and Pacific. So that kind of makes sense because actually it picked one of the countries out there. Uh, Philippines is one of them that uh, is selling their kids. This is one in seven reported runaways in the U.S. in 2018, likely a victim of sex trafficking and this is girls in foster cares are particularly vulnerable so i thought about that and i said how terrible is that that there's so many families uh their kids are being taken away from their parents and put into foster care but then that's just a jumping board for especially girls to become sex traffic so it's a bigger issue than just it's the whole system, you know. I don't know what, what you can really do about it at this point other than God being able to restore all these people's hearts and take out the wicked. And it says the profits from the forced sex labor are estimated $99 billion worldwide. So that's the key. That's the money that's flowing from all of this. Uh, you know, almost a hundred billion dollars. It's an economy of its own. It says the profits are highest per sex trafficking victims in the developed economies. Number of the victims are highest in Asia. The annual profits per victims were highest in the developed countries because traffickers can charge more for sex acts. And I guess around 80,000 to 55,000 per victims. So that's a lot of money that's being exchanged uh, for young girls and boys. I just found this kind of crazy that the statistics are worldwide. And I think there was another article that talked about Mexico, Philippines, and the United States as being the top three countries that are doing the human trafficking. And I, I'm guessing because they're coming from Mexico and Asia and into the United States, they're probably going all the way up to Canada where you're at. So you're right. I don't know why I would you would expect to see any of it in Canada, but it's worldwide. So I think God is using you to help tell the story of what's happening to young girls, especially. Is there more that you discovered as you were making this film? Yeah. So um, I learned also that in Canada, the vast majority, which 90, almost 96% of known victims uh, uh, sex trafficking are young girls and women, same as the statistics that you found globally. Yeah. And uh, 25% of them are under the age of 18. And I did confirm that with the um, organizations for um, that they help rehabilitate victims. And it's because they get the statistics firsthand. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, they can start as young as 12 years old. And uh, most of the time is from within the family. Yeah. They, they, they get trafficked when they are like older, 18 years old, is because they run away from their homes. Usually they're broken homes. 
and uh, and especially in these reserves, they don't have universities or colleges. So then they will have to go to the the closest city. Uh, in this case, it was Sudbury was the the main city for them, and so that's where they get a, they get advan get an advantage on because they don't know much about what's out there for them. You know how to pay college or university. They they don't know any of this stuff is not being taught to them that they will have access to many kinds of uh, benefits just for being well, indigenous. Is there programs that you connected with that you can tie to your film to? Um, yes, yes, exactly. That's that's one of the things that I was talking to them. Like, how about prevention? What can we do something? Because they do take care of the victims afterwards. But what yeah. if we can avoid them to ever even going into that route? Right. And I remember the ladies where I was talking to them, they were like, yeah, we had thought about that. I was like, okay. So that's when I come in. I want to fill in the gap. Right. I want to, I want to be there for these young girls and make them resourceful so no one can take advantage of them. Give them the identity that I was given to me, that they're children of God and they deserve the best and that they can, they can do it without anyone else but God by their side. Once they have that identity, no one can take that away from them because Jesus becomes their rock. And once you're in the rock, no one can take you down. Right. It doesn't matter right, what, what you go through. And and I want to teach them what I went through and uh, av to avoid them to go through the the horrible circle that they call sex trafficking. So and this sounds like your ministry, the ministry work of actually going. Yeah, that's you know, what it feels All like. these young girls and boys that you come across. Have you asked like these organizations and not only to connect them through maybe organization where you can raise money to therapy or whatever that you're part of ministering them, but also maybe they could sponsor your film. Has Canada yeah. been offered to sponsor your film? Um, we we have tried to find organizations, uh, but um, this is there's not that much, um, I guess, support towards yeah. the art. They might not have that belief that we can change people through media. And uh, unfortunately, this you know that's an old mindset. We need to evolve. Jesus, I remember he talked based on how people talk back then. Yeah. And now we have to do the same as Christians. Well, media we have is the most powerful tool there is. Exactly. That's exactly why I'm doing all the projects and the podcasts and wanting to make my own films for the same reason. Because exactly. there's one way to minister, you know, the 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 ordained ministers at a church they can but if a lot of young people are you know abused and in the system they're not going to be looking at those organizations That's but right. they might see your story and say you know i connect to that girl yes. and and it's right it's i have to call out uh, to god to help me so they yes. will you know it's it's through music and uh, visual communications that the young people in today's generation, everybody, even my generations, yes. are looking towards. So I think that's why, you know, what God has sent you on this mission to do, that it's that's why you're doing it. Because it, the, we all have a, you know, our own sort of ministries to work on. And you picked, you know, what you really care about and what you encountered. I'm sure God will, you know, help you get to the finish line. And it looks like you've already filmed it. So you just need that extra budget. So hopefully yeah. all of you guys that are watching. And if you are, you know, Christian, you want to donate and then you want to donate to projects like this because you, what's the point of watching all these filthy movies and satanic stuff that's in all of them? And you guys know all of this. That's why you listen to my podcast podcast and all of that stuff why not help out help out uh you know i'll post a link and you guys can help support her film and finish it and then from there you know more and more things will it'll be like a launching pad for her to even minister in reality and real life to all the young girls that she encounters through that film so i really hope that um this message is coming across to you guys and then you'll help support the film so is there anything else you want to share about your story or you know about the film or anything that you want to talk about yeah so I, I love the way you say everything because it's that collaboration it's not like oh you know it's my film it's everybody's film where when, when we collaborate towards it the way i see it is that we're all uh volunteering our time or our money 
to God's project because at the end of the day, he gave it to me. I didn't write it. I didn't know how to write it, but he gave it to me. From there, we want to save at least 500 girls' lives this year and bring this film to uh, high schools right. starting so that way, you know, when they're ready to live to college or move into the bigger city, they know already what's out there and what's available to them. My my co-producer is my husband and he's a financial advisor. So he knows everything that has to do with benefits for, for high school kids and uh, what they can take advantage of for themselves, you know, for government grants and everything that they don't have to pay right away or some things that are like for free for them. They don't know these things. They are not being taught in high school. So my husband and I will be touring onto these high schools, starting in Manipuli Island, showing them what's out there. Because yeah. you know, the, the blessings are there, but we need to grab them. We need to know where they are so we can enjoy them. Because, you know, what the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. But if we know the knowledge, then what Jesus says, the truth will set you free. Once you know the truth, no one can tell you otherwise. But... We have to state it from a point of view where where Jesus is the source of everything. Without him, we can't accomplish anything. And I think that will be the main message for this film, to start a bigger project of prevention and make these women, young women and young men, resourceful, not just for them, but for the community and be a light yeah. to everyone. You know, when we you have a light, you put it on top of the table. You don't put it underneath the, the table. So you got to shine well, you're it. Using your film as your ministry work, and it's going to expand. Yeah. Out. All those churchgoers, you got to know that you know our work is is even outside the church. It's not just to go in yeah. and and you know give them regular tithings, but your tithing should actually come through all of the Christian work that you are coming across, like Penelope story and other stories that I'm going to be hopefully getting to someday. Uh, so I really hope that the Christian community is now realizing that the work is not just inside the church, but it's everywhere and we're all responsible and we're all given different pieces of the pie uh, as the Christ body to be able to go out and reach and touch other people through our work. In this case, you know, Lissetti is, is a filmmaker, so she's going to be reaching out to all her, you know, the ministries is going to reach far and wide through all the countries when she's finished with her film. So I can't wait to actually see the finished film. And uh, so I'm, I'm assuming that all the budget will cover to distribution and it'll be ready and yes. be submitted to the film festivals and so on. Yes, that's right. And then the great thing about this uh, particular platform, that's why I switched from Kickstarter, is that Seed and Spark actually helps filmmakers independent filmmakers so when you reach a goal of 250 followers even if they don't all contribute but at least following the campaign is showing interest then they will help you to uh, put your film on streaming platforms and also on uh, sharing it with other um, they have like a sponsorships with other film festivals and mm -hmm. then you don't have to pay for the for the for the film entry so then at that point, our uh, distribution uh, gets expanded right. by like 50%. And just by having the following that are backing the project, we're like, we want to see the film. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good point because I did see that you had like about 70 some followers. So to reach that yeah. 254, you yes. guys can follow her. I mean, even if you can't donate, go ahead and sign up with the site and follow her so she can at least push that film out in the distribution and have the site help her out. Anything you can do would be awesome. I'm really happy to at least catch up with you. I know that we talked a lot about your own personal story last time. Maybe the next podcast, we can revisit your own personal story. Um, but this is, you know, I wish you all the success in this film. And of course, when I'm ready, I, I would love to be able to... Yes collaborate and talk to you about how to get my film out there uh, I did finish the story uh, it's based on the book of Ruth so that yeah, I'm so that, yeah. everything. but I realized how difficult it was because when you start writing all the scenes you're like oh that's something that needs to get paid to be able to get there and do it so I recognize mm -hmm. how these making these films are very very expensive so I wish you the best of luck in getting the full funding 
Thank you so much, Tima, for your time, for making this beautiful podcast, for allowing uh, my message to go through your audience as well. I give God thanks for you as well, because you're also doing your part from bringing your life to the world. Yeah, so, thank you so much. For more people like you to rise up. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm hoping we just connect as a body of Christ and then we help each other out. So I do appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Until next time. And I uh, wish you the best. God bless Bye. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Take care.